Are you there? Are you comfortable? Where am I? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, friends. I'm super glad you're here. I know it's been a minute since my last video. You can probably tell there's been a few changes around here. And the biggest change has been the fact that I've switched over from using Mac to using Z by HP products to edit all of my photos and videos. And I can honestly say I absolutely love it. So let me tell you what's been so much better about my switch over to Z by HP as opposed to my old Mac. First of all, let's talk about processing power. With my old Mac, I'd have a video project open or a Photoshop project open with a bunch of layers. I'm in the creative zone and all of a sudden the computer can't process the information and I'm waiting on a spinny wheel or Adobe Premiere shuts down. It's really frustrating and gets in the way of the creative process. Now I have the Z4 desktop, which is a processing power beast and I have not had one issue in Premiere and Photoshop and Lightroom and it just allows me to be a creative person and focus on that. Secondly, this 31 inch dream color display is stunning. Compared to my old Mac, which was 27 inches, the colors on this display and the brightness of them far exceed what I was using, and it really helps me fine tune color accuracy when I'm editing photos. And if you follow me on Instagram, you definitely know I love to work with colors. So I'm absolutely loving this display. Lastly, I'm also using a ZBook X2. It's kind of like a laptop, but it comes apart and you can use it as a tablet and it comes with a stylus. So it's really helped me explore other ways of being creative, especially in Photoshop and with the stylus. And I've been messing around with it a little bit and I'm super stoked to incorporate this into my creative workflow. So yeah, I've switched over to Z by HP. I absolutely love it. And if you're thinking about making the switch over from Mac, I would definitely recommend it. So let's get into how I made this image using Photoshop. And before we even get into Photoshop, I wanted to give you guys a couple pointers on how to take a good silhouette. The best silhouettes are shot when you can see the horizon visibly where the sun is set. If you have too many high mountains or too many trees, whatever subject that you're silhouetting might be blocked in the composition of it. It won't be a stark contrast between the shadowed silhouetted subject and then the nice beautiful sunset sky. The next key thing, the best silhouettes taken, or at least this photo was taken about 15, 20, 25 minutes even after the sun has dropped below the horizon. Now you can do this right after the sun drops below the horizon, but I found it best to wait a little bit longer after that and you get really nice contrasted silhouettes. The next thing is shoot lower to the ground. Obviously anything but the sky is gonna be dark shadow. If I'm shooting down on alley, it's not gonna be much of a silhouette. This might seem like common sense, but it's something crucial to think about when taking a really good clean silhouette. Away. Now after I took these photos, I went into Lightroom, got it down to the one that I liked the most, got an edit on it, and then got it into Photoshop where I got the final result. So let me show you guys what I did there. So the very first thing I did in Photoshop was select these birds to bring over to my other image to then arrange them in a way to where it looks like they're flying out from Alley. It was actually really easy to select all these birds in Photoshop. Here's what I did. I went to select focus area and from here it's going to already auto pick what's in focus for you. From here, I drop the in-focus range down a bit uh, to about three. I hit this little minus tool here. I went ahead and deleted a lot of this area here that it thinks it's in focus, but it's really not. Literally selecting these birds, it took me maybe less than five minutes to do this. And we can even zoom in on some of these other areas here just so that when this layer is copied over, it's nice and clean. So once I had gotten it to a point where it looked like this, I simply hit OK. And there it's already selected. And then if you just hit Control J on your keyboard, you have your birds selected. So I've already done that here on this layer. And now taking this new layer with the birds, I just duplicated it over to the main image. Right click on layer one, hit duplicate layer. 
assign it to the appropriate image and there they are. Now what we're going to see with this layer is if you zoom in here we're still going to see a little bit of uh, lightness around these birds and let me show you a super easy way to fix that. We're going to take layer one, we're going to go to adjustments here, select tone curve, we're going to hit this little box here which applies this adjustment only to this layer and we're going to take the brightest part of this tone curve and drag it all the way down. All that whiteness went away. Super easy to do and now we can move on. So now that we have these birds on its own layer here on this image, I can adjust them and duplicate them however I'd like to really create the effect that the birds are flying out from Alley. So let me show you a couple ideas that I worked with to get the effect that I want. Here was the very first idea that I had and honestly this was just too many birds. I think it was just a bit overkill. The second idea and the idea that I liked the most was a bit more minimal. I really just liked how it wasn't too much for the eyes to look at but it was still the effect. In order to achieve this effect from this layer it was simply a matter of positioning the layer, duplicating it, rearranging it until it looked how I wanted. So from here I'm going to use a lot of the eraser tool and remove quite a few of these birds here like on this area here as well as maybe some over here. Then with this layer you can hit Control J which duplicates the layer and you can mess around with this. If I wanted to make them much bigger here I could definitely do that and then erase some of these. So I kind of rinsed and repeated this process until I got the effect that I wanted. You're definitely going to want to take your time with this kind of thing and make sure you like the end result. So from here I created the dissolve effect where it looks like Allie's body is morphing into these birds. I first created a new layer and then if you go to the clone stamp tool, made sure the opacity was up to 100% and I wanted quite a bit of hardness here so I put that at 100% as well. I also wanted to make sure that the clone stamp tool would be stamping information from the background image as well as the current layer. So I set it to current and below. So if we zoom in here. I began by selecting some of the sky here and just piece by piece stamping in sky where Ali's body would normally be. This probably took me another 20 or 30 minutes just to really kind of get this to where I want it. I took some of the black from Ali's silhouette and added that out here and simply worked this until I got the effect that I wanted. Which again, if I take that layer off and go to that, you can even see some of the opacity here on the clone stamp was a little bit less. So it almost looks like it's that dissolve effect is like wisping away. And it really does look like that whole part of her body is becoming something else. From here, I added the stars to the sky and then I was done. Well, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something. And again, I'm so stoked on the switch over to Z by HP products. It's already far exceeded my expectations and is so much better than my old setup. Leave a like on this video. Comment below if you have any questions for me on the tutorial or any of the Z by HP products. I would love to answer those for you. And also subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be putting out a lot more videos with this setup. So stay tuned and hey, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.